Hey there, I'm Kendra from Kendra's Got Wood and today I'm going to show you how to make a laser engraved epoxy inlay. This is one that's already finished and this is one that still needs to be oiled but I'm going to show you guys on this piece of cherry how you can make your own. Well, the first thing you need to do is determine your laser settings. So I did this by running a couple of tests. I know that I want this to come out deep enough so that when I am sanding off my excess epoxy, that I'm not going to sand my design off too. So again, I just ran some tests. I feel like I should really stress that your settings are going to depend on your laser. I'm going to do my speed at 200 and my power at 35. I have a 100 watt laser. And again, you're going to have to run your own tests because I know that everybody's laser is kind of different. So I've already got my design here all ready to go. And I will go ahead and link where you can actually purchase this design that I drew myself if you want to go ahead and purchase this file. And I will show you guys how I do this. So as you can see, I just make myself a little cardboard template. That's how I know where to line up my laser. You might have your own way of doing things, but this is how I go ahead and do it. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch this entire engrave, but I do wanna show you really quick in real time how slow my laser is moving in order to get the engrave deep enough to pour the epoxy into. The full engrave took my machine about 20 minutes in total and the design itself is about four by seven inches. I just want to really quickly talk about choosing your wood for this project. I don't recommend using any type of soft wood because the resin can kind of absorb right into it. Additionally, I don't recommend using very grainy woods because again, those grains can just kind of suck up your tinted resin and sometimes that color can be hard to remove. So I've got this all engraved and ready to be sanded and I just want to make a note that you may need to run yours twice. Before I take mine out of the laser, I always make sure it does look deep enough because again, if it's not deep enough, when you're sanding the excess epoxy off, it's going to sand your design off and you don't want that. So it's better to wait and run your engrave twice, make sure it's deep enough than to run into that down the line. I make sure to clean up all the extra charring and then I go ahead and blow the dust out of the engrave prior to doing any epoxy. All right, it is all sanded up and now I'm going to test your patience because we've got a little bit of prep work to do. So here I am going to mix up the Mazepoxy's flag resin and I only need a little bit of it. You could absolutely use a tabletop system for this part, but I just like the flag system because it does dry or it hardens a little bit faster. Well, a lot faster than the tabletop system. So I'm mixing this up by weight. This is actually my favorite way to measure out resin. If you go on the Mazepoxy's website, they have a great calculator for this. So be sure to check that out. And again, I just need to mix up a little bit of this and I am going to just brush this over my engrave. So this is gonna seal the wood to prevent not only bubbles on my final pour, but it is gonna prevent any bleeding from occurring. I had mentioned how I was going to test your patience here. It is kind of rough having to wait for a base layer to dry, but I just wanna show you so this is another cherry board that I had done. And as you can see, the tinted epoxy really just bled right into the wood. I could not get this out. So I ended up scrapping this piece completely. So this is to prevent that from happening. So again, you could use the flag system like I'm using. I like the flag system because it is it hardens so much faster. This cures in about three hours with the medium hardener. So then I can go ahead and do my next layer whereas the tabletop is more like eight hours. It's pretty warm out today, so I might even get this to dry in even less time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this on here. I don't want it to feel like this, so I'm gonna probably try to get that out of there. I am simply just wanting to get around the design so that when I pour my colored epoxy onto this, I don't get that bleeding because again, it's just impossible to get out once you get that. It is no fun and I, ultimately I've had to scrap that project because of it. So I just went ahead and coated around the flowers and then I used a smaller paintbrush to get inside the engrave just to kind of seal that too. Here is just a close up of what this looks like right now and I'm gonna cover this up so nothing gets stuck into it and go work on something else while this hardens and then we will move on to the fun part. Hey guys, so I am back. It is day two of this. Full disclosure, I did try to do both pours in the same day and I ended up not really liking my color combinations, so I ended up wiping it all off and we're gonna start fresh today. So new colors, I'll have to make that into like a blooper video or something because it was quite the mess. Today I am gonna be using the tabletop system, not the flag system that I used yesterday. Um, this has a longer working time. So that way if I run into any issues like I did yesterday, 
I have more time to kind of work with it and it won't start curing on me. So I've got my station here pretty much prepped and we are gonna get started. So I'm just gonna measure out my resin. This one's a one-to-one -one system. And one of the things that you can do is put the resin in a warm bath, just the resin, not the, not the hardener. And that helps eliminate the bubbles. So I did go ahead and do that because sometimes with these, you can get just kind of pesky bubbles that become really hard to get rid of. So I did warm my resin just before this, so I'm hoping it helps eliminate. And this is definitely gonna be more epoxy than I need, but it gives me more to mix up and I'll just pour some of the extra into a mold. I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this up. And you can see that I have very little bubbles going on right now. So we'll see, hopefully that helped. I still have a good amount of bubbles. I probably could have left that heating up a little bit longer, but that's okay. It's nothing we can't eliminate with the heat gun. And I don't really have a plan color-wise. I always try to leave a bit of clear set aside. As you can see, I'm using the Mix All pigments. They're usually my favorite. I just kind of mixed a couple up and I'm gonna do some shades of green. So I'm just gonna mix up my colors now. And again, I don't really have a plan here. My goal is to just not screw this up like I did the first time. So I'm just gonna mix up a few different greens, maybe get a little bit of brown in. And I just kinda wanna make like a little faded. Ooh, this looks really brown. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna keep playing with these colors and you guys can obviously use whatever colors that work best for you. But again, I'm just kind of experimenting here. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna add a little bit of mica powder to this just to add a little something extra. I really like this color, so. All right, let's do this. I'm just gonna, again, I'm winging this, so bear with me. I don't really have a plan. Maybe I should have made one color-wise, but we're just gonna go for it. And I'm not trying to, as you can see, you could use a syringe and try to get this all perfect, but I'm impatient and I think that that is a waste of time. So I just slap it right on. I just wanna mention right now, I did not really end up liking the white and the yellow. So I ended up kind of blending that in and making it way more green, but I wanted to leave this in just so you guys could see this part of the process. The heat is to pop any bubbles and I also think it kind of helped blend as well. And this is my favorite part. By scraping the extra epoxy off, it gives me an idea of what it's going to look like. And at this point, I usually start to kind of mess with it. I don't know how I feel about all the white and yellow. I might just kind of blend this all in so it's mostly green. And I'm just going to keep playing around with this until it's something I'm happy with. So I'm not going to make you guys watch me repeat the same process over and over again. I mostly just blended the greens around until I got them to a point where I was happy with them. Here is where I'm going to leave it. I will sometimes scrape off the excess, but I'm not going to this time because sometimes when I do that, I'm left with a little bit of space and I kind of have to sand more than I want to to get it all level. So I'm just going to leave it a big old mess. If I absolutely have to, I'll run it through my planer but I wanna talk about a couple of things I wish I did differently. Okay, let's talk about what I wish I would have done differently. I wish I would have taped the sides and the bottom. I told myself to do that beforehand and I forgot, so that's just gonna be some extra cleanup. The other thing is I pretty much worked on this until I ran out of working time. My epoxy was starting to cure and I was still messing with this. So I don't really recommend playing around with it for as long as I did, but I'm hoping once I sand that all off, I'll still be happy with my results. So we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to see. Well, I had to wait until the next day. You guys don't have to. So here we are on the third day of this project and I have already jumped into sanding with 80 grit. I decided not to run it through my planer because I didn't wanna risk planing off my whole design. Plus it's not really good on those planer knives. I'm not gonna make you guys watch a full hour of me sanding this board, but I will touch on a couple of important things. I started with 80 grit and I'm sanding front to back and now I'm switching to 120. You can see about how much I've sanded off at this point. When you're sanding, make sure that you're not just focusing on the epoxy area. I know that can be really tempting to do, but then you can end up with that area of your board being thinner than the other part and you definitely don't want that. Make sure in between grits, you're getting all the dust off. That helps prevent any of those pesky sanding swirls that you can get left with. 
Here I'm finishing up with 180 grit and you can see that I've got all the excess epoxy off. I'm just blowing the dust off again and now I'm going to add water to raise the grain. A lot of people use a spray bottle but I don't have one so I'm just wiping some on. And once this dries I'm going to switch to 220 and go at it with that. So from here on out I sanded all the way up to 600 grit and I'm not going to show you that whole process however I will show you my results. I sanded from 80 all the way up to 600 and I just want to show how this looks before I put any oil or anything on it so you can tell that the 600 grit really makes it kind of shine back up. Um, you could go even higher if you wanted to. A lot of people argue that oil won't penetrate the wood if you go too high. Some people will say even 600 is too high. It's up to you how high you want to sand. The higher you sand, the shinier your resin will get. All right, we are at the final step to this and I am going to oil it up. I'm using Odie's oil because that's what I have on hand and I think it is the best product for these types of boards. It's food safe and all natural. And I'm just using a little piece of a sanding pad to apply it. These are great. I'll be sure to link all the products that I'm using throughout this below as well so that you guys can find that easily. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up, but I just wanna say a couple quick things. If you decide to use Odie's, you really don't need to use a whole lot. A tiny little bit goes a long way. All you do is wipe it on, and wait about 45 minutes and buff it back off. And I'm always happy with my results. And this is prior to buffing, but here's a little close up of what it looks like all oiled up and just about finished. And here is my final result. I'll let you guys get a little close-up view of it. I added a rope for decorative purposes. I added my branding to the back side. I don't know if I love my color choices on the flowers, but that's okay. The green contrasts really well with the cherry, so overall I'm happy with it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Please follow along with me on my other social channels. Everything is linked below, and if you decide to purchase any of these products, I would love if you shop through my affiliate links below and use my affiliate codes. So. Thanks again for stopping by, and if you decide to make one of these, please tag me. I would love to see it.